a desert planet with twin suns. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Use my knowledge. Much to learn, you still have. Welcome back to Twin Sun Talks, folks. I'm your host, Jonah Lou. Thank you so much for listening, and welcome to our third edition of Star Wars Boot Camp. It's going to be a little bit of a longer episode because we're going through both the sequel trilogy and the spinoff movies, um, and I want to get up through all that in a pretty condensed and manageable time. So without further ado, let's dive into boot camp. On the double. Yes, sir. So to start this episode out, I'm going to be going through the sequel trilogy, which are episodes 7, 8, and 9. Uh, episode 7 is called The Force Awakens. Episode 8 is called The Last Jedi, and Episode 9 is called The Rise of Skywalker. They are the last in release order. They came out in the mid to late uh, 2010s, and they're also the last in chronological order as far as the uh, the chronology of Star Wars goes up until this point. Um, Next, I'm going to go through the main characters. I'm only going to go over new characters um, because there are reappearances from some prominent original trilogy characters who I'm sure if you've been following along and watching the movies as I go through these um, I'm sure you'll be familiar with them. So I'm just going to go through major new characters from this trilogy. So first off, we have Rey. Uh, Rey is the main protagonist, and she kind of drives the story. Finn is a former stormtrooper who um, goes on his own journey uh, throughout the trilogy. Poe is a hotshot pilot who turns into a respected leader. Uh, BB-8 is a trusty droid of Poe's. He's loyal and spunky. And Kylo Ren is the conflicted villain of the trilogy and one of the leaders of the First Order. Honorable mentions, uh, we have Snoke, who's a dark figure and the supreme leader of the First Order. General Hux is a general of the First Order and is essentially Space Hitler. Maz Kanata is a wise old pirate who provides aid and insight. And Rose Tico is a maintenance worker who takes a plunge into the greater galaxy. Um, Some important um, locations are Jakku, which is a desert planet the site of a large Imperial loss. Um, Starkiller Base, which is a super weapon of the First Order capable of destroying multiple planets at once. Uh, the ecosystem is kind of snowy and icy. Uh, Cantobite, it's a casino planet with a gambl- uh, full of gambling and luxury. Octo is a water planet with a lot of islands. Um, Crate is a planet with a layer of salt over a red sand crust. And Exegol is a dark desert world in the unknown regions of the galaxy, which is said to be the hidden homeworld of the Sith. Or not homeworld, just the hidden world of the Sith. Um, Some other planets that are visited very briefly, and specifically the Rise of Skywalker, but we don't have too many distinguishing factors, are Pasana, Kajimi, and Kefbir. Um, They're not of consequence, but we we hop around a lot in the Rise of Skywalker, so I felt like they were worth mentioning. All right, what else to know from this trilogy? The first few are going to be relatively uh, familiar to y'all because I've gone over them in every single trilogy so far, but the first one is the Jedi. They use the Force to maintain peace in the galaxy, and they are free of all attachments to maintain objectivity. Uh, The Sith. They are the dark counterparts of the Jedi and use fear and anger to gain power and rule with absolute authority. Lightsabers are the iconic weapons of the Jedi and Sith, Uh, They are swords with blades of energy, and they either have red blades for the Sith or blue or green blades for the Jedi. Um, And that's speaking very generally. Obviously, there are exceptions here and there, but if we're speaking in general terms, that's the case. Um, The Force is an energy field that gives the Jedi and Sith unique powers. It flows through all life and connects everything in the galaxy. The New Republic is the central government of most of the galaxy. The First Order is a military regime trying to take take control from the New Republic. The Resistance is the opposition uh, to the spread of the First Order. And then the Stormtroopers are the foot soldiers of the First Order. They wear the iconic white armor. Um, And that's about all that I have to say about that. Next, I'm going to go into my one-sentence synopsis of each of the movies. First off, we have The Force Awakens. As the First Order threatens the security of the New Republic, the Resistance's search for Luke Skywalker brings unlikely heroes to their cause. Next up, we have Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Rey searches for answers about her past as the Resistance fights against the clock to escape the First Order. The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9. An old threat returns unexpectedly, leading our heroes on a quest to find and defeat this evil before it wreaks havoc on the galaxy. So... That's all that I have about the sequel trilogy. 
I'm going to leave my thoughts about it unsaid. I feel like if you've listened to the podcast, you know how I feel about it. But if this is your first time watching it, I'm excited that you're getting into Star Wars. So I'll let you make your own opinions about it. Uh, moving on to the spinoffs. These are movies that don't take... They're not episodic. They're not episode one, episode two. But they still are theatrical releases that I felt necessary to address. So the first one is Rogue One. This is set between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope, really right up against the events of Episode Four and New Hope. The main characters are Jyn Erso, who's the protagonist, a rebellious loose cannon, Cassian Andor, rebel intelligence officer. He's ruthless and committed to the cause. You might recognize his name from a show that's coming out uh, as this episode's coming out. Uh, K2SO. He's a re- reprogrammed Imperial security droid and also acts as sort of a comic relief character. Chirrut Emway and Baze Malbus are both former Guardians of the Wills. Um, Bodhi, Rock, or Bodhi Rook is an Imperial pilot who defects. And Orson Krennic is the Imperial officer overseeing an important project. Honorable mentions are Galen Erso, who's the father of Jyn Erso, a prominent Imperial scientist, and then Sog Rera, who's a rebel extremist. Um... There are some original trilogy locations that I'm not including in this, um, but some important locations are Jeddah, which is has an ancient temple that holds kyber crystals, Edu, the site of an imperial research facility, and Scarif, uh, which houses imperial information, an imperial information citadel. The one sentence synopsis for Rogue One is: In the face of a cataclysmic threat, a ragtag group of rebels fights to find a weakness to an Imperial superweapon. Um, Lastly, we have Solo, a Star Wars story, also set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Uh, The main characters include Han Solo, the namesake of the movie. He's optimistic and sneaky um, and a bit of a scoundrel. He's an excellent pilot pilot and the protagonist of the story. Kira has a checkered past and plays every side. Chewbacca is a loyal Wookiee sidekick. Tobias Beckett is a mentor to Han, as well as a bounty hunter, and Lando Calrissian is a charismatic smuggler who provides his ship to assist the heroes. Honorable mentions include Dryden Voss, who is a ruthless crime boss, and Emphis Nest, who is a rebel leader. Uh, Some important locations include Corellia, which is a shipbuilding planet, as well as Han Solo's homeworld. Mimbam is essentially like a World War I trench warfare style planet. Um, where we see Han, uh, what we see Han there a little bit. And then Kessel is a mining planet with a complex route, uh, to come and to leave. Um, and Kessel is significant because of course the Kessel run, I made the Kessel run in 12 parsecs. Um, that whole, that whole section is, is involved in the movie as well. So a one sentence synopsis. This is a story of a, about a young man who, while trying to reunite with his love interest, ends up in, in a debt, which takes him on a galactic journey. Um, so, I sped ran through all of those. I feel like I covered pretty much everything. I'm sorry if I talked a little fast. I just didn't want... I try to keep these episodes under uh, 10 minutes. So, we're trying to hit that mark. I think I did that. That being said, this wouldn't be a proper episode if I didn't leave you with just a little bit more. More! What I have for y'all today is that the working title uh, during production for Rogue One was Los Alamos. Um, which is just interesting because Star Wars just tends to have some weird uh, working titles. But um, that being said, that's all that I have. Please send this to anyone who you know who's trying to get into Star Wars. That's who this is for. Um, So if you know anybody or you just want, maybe you don't even need to send it to them, just regurgitate this information back to them. I feel like this is an easy way to sort of, a palatable way to get into the franchise. And that's the goal of this series. Uh, I have... Uh, episodes out about the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy go ahead and uh, scroll back through the podcast feed or go to youtube i have a playlist for these there um and i'm going to be going through all a bunch of different like basic star wars topics like i'm going to go through the shows next uh, and then we're going to move into just basic topics like the jedi the sith stuff like that um it's going to be a fun time so please 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 send this to someone who you know who's trying to get into star wars stay tuned later this week for my Andor review and breakdown, as well as my um, uh, this month's edition of The Ability to Speak Does Not Make You Intelligent. All that will be coming uh, very soon. That being said, you've taken your first steps into a larger world. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, friends.